Welcome back to Fast Gadgets. Today I'm going to install Office 2013 in a virtual uh, machine, which happens to be um, Windows 8.1. And before I get started, though, I always like to install the um, tools so that I get better performance out of my virtual machine. So I'm going to use the VirtualBox Guest Editions and I'm going to go ahead and install those. Uh, if you watched my previous episode, you know that this particular virtual machine is running excellent. Um, the hardware platform that we are, are on is a Lenovo 2 Yoga, Lenovo Yoga 2 Pro, I should say, uh, with 8 gigabytes of RAM, a 256 gigabyte solid state device, and uh, Windows 8.1 inside the virtual machine running Fedora 24 on the actual Lenovo itself. So I'm getting great performance. I've been extremely pleased. Now, I won't say you have to do a reboot, but I'm going to go ahead and do the reboot here. And check out this reboot. Watch how fast this comes back up. This is awesome. And I'm thinking a virtual machine, so definitely if I need to do office support or the lecture series I'm going to work on, I can do this. Now normally you don't have to change the resolution. You can see it should snap to grid, so it should always fit uh, whatever resolution you change the virtual machine window to. So everything's working great. Uh, maybe do a little personalizing, change some settings. I like to change the scaling um, because on my high DPI display it's kind of difficult to see. I'm going to change the uh, scaling to 125%. I'll sign out and when it comes back in Check out the font size. It makes things much easier to see. So we're logging back in. And I think you can already tell, you can see now that the font is much larger, uh, much more readable. So I'm going to go to Devices, Optical Drives, choose Disk Image. Right now it's got the Windows ISO that I use to install the operating system. And I've got a hard drive here, a USB external with all of my ISOs that I use. And I have Office 2013 here. Well, I thought I did, but as luck would have it, if I run setup, Office 14 is Office Professional Plus 2010. Well, I don't need that. I really need to support Office 2013 on Windows 8.1 uh, for some of the courses that I'm teaching. So that's not going to work for me. So what I've done, I have uh, several licenses for Office through my accounts online with the various schools that I teach with. So what I'll do, <clears throat> and I have to be careful, I don't want to select Office 2016. So if I scroll down here, you can still get the previous edition. right here. I wish they'd go back farther, but this works too. I mean, at least they have any of the so-called Office 365 editions available here, so hopefully they'll keep that up uh, as new versions become available. So I'm going to do an install here. And the first thing it does is download an installer application. 
And to me, this is the easiest way because you don't have to worry about having the media or anything like that. Um, even if you're not a student at a college, um, you should be able to get a single license for about uh, $70 for two years. Uh, I believe that's what I got. I did buy one commercial license for myself. Um, and then I have licenses through the colleges I work with. Install time is not too bad. Um, it got me thinking with this virtual machine. I only set up a single core. I wish I had set up more. So the one thing I do like though is performance is really good. Now this is VirtualBox. Um, and I used DNF to install it, which I showed in my previous video. Um, but performance is excellent. But there are some tweaks I can make to the virtual hardware uh, to tie in better with the physical hardware so that I get better performance. This part can be a little bit tedious. I'm curious out there, how many of you use Office or are you using um, one of the open source Office programs? Uh, I know there are several that are popular. Uh, Libre is probably the most popular right now. Before that was OpenOffice. Um, and of course Sun was the original maker of um, the first so-called open source Office product. Well, actually Sun, Microsystems, their version of Office wasn't open source necessarily, but it was uh, free. And I think open Office was a fork uh, and that was allowed by Sun Microsystems. And they made their own open source version. And then Libre was a fork of open Office. Um, you know, sometimes it's not a problem to do all the forks, you know, because another group decides that they want to make a new version of Office, but other times it is. I'm going to pull up System Monitor here. The reason why it's bad to have too many forks, of course, is because then you're dealing with uh, dilution of the um, coders, programmers, you know, and in general resources to two different groups. Um, processing, you can see my CPU usage, excellent, maybe oh you know 50 to 60 percent overall. Memory, I've got 4.6 going now. I allocated two gigabytes to this virtual machine. And there's really no network going on. Um, I'm actually really impressed with how fast the download occurs. I always thought it would take a lot longer, but it really doesn't. Not a whole lot going on here. Um, but what I wanted to say about uh, having multiple versions of software like Libre and OpenOffice is again you tend to dilute you know the resources available for um, development and programming and development is key and you can see here the virtual machine is quite fluid I really have no problems whatsoever I'm really impressed with VirtualBox um, it kind of surprises me that Oracle is running it, um, but then again, they have a lot of open source products that they uh, oversee and manage. And I, I really think VirtualBox is one of the best. Um, the newest one, of course, is Boxes. I don't know if anybody's heard of that one. And I have used it, but it's such a pain to find out exactly where um the virtual machine is located and moving it is really a pain so what i like about virtual box is it's all contained in one little folder you can just copy that folder to another computer install virtual box and you're ready to go um 
with boxes, it is huge. It's it's a real chore to copy a virtual box over to another machine. So for that reason, um, it has a ways to go in my opinion. And it certainly isn't as efficient or doesn't run as well as VirtualBox or um, VMware, which I used to use VMware exclusively. But uh, being proprietary, and it, I, I'm not saying it's the company's fault necessarily, but um, they just didn't keep up very well with kernel updates. So VMware would be broken easily with a new kernel and you would have to freeze your kernel. So here I can add more processors here if I go into display I can enable acceleration which I haven't even done yet. Um, unfortunately the machine needs to be turned off the virtual machine that is to enable acceleration and add more processing cores and I'm gonna do those two things next time I reboot it um, which will improve performance even more. So basically I'll be able to tie in with the hardware um, for the display and give it more processing power. I, I only have two physical and four virtual cores so of course I never go over two cores. Just not a good idea. Uh, sound was working great so everything passed through was working awesome. Um, the virtual DVD, USB, network, sound, all that stuff is working great. And keep in mind that I'm actually running uh, Voco Screen, so I'm actually capturing this while I am running uh, Windows 8, while installing Microsoft Office, um, while running my physical system. Uh, so I consider that awesome and I really have no lag to speak of. Why use virtualization though? Do any of you use virtualization? Uh, for me it's very important. I really like to support um, every operating system that I can. Now here I went full screen um, and you know I haven't even enabled hardware acceleration or added the other core and performance is absolutely beautiful. So Office is installed. Now this test I'm going to do, I'm going to go to YouTube and I'm going to go ahead and go full screen and run a video. So here's a video in YouTube plays really well in my opinion looks good plays well um, and I haven't even done hardware acceleration or any of that so this was a quick simple video on installing office 2013 in a virtual machine running virtual box hope you enjoyed the video and I hope to see you again uh, drop a few comments let me know if you're using virtual box or another virtualization platform and what kind of performance you get and whether or not it's worth it for you.